Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Music Talk with Dave and Mike. I'm Dave. I'm Mike. How's it going? This week, we're going to bring you the latest Travis Tritt. It looks like this. It's called Set in Stone. Pretty, pretty cool cover, I suppose. I mean, if you're going to put your face on there, you might as well do it in like a black and white. Might look better if you had Bob Ross paint it and then he could put a happy little tree in there. But, you know, the drawing is pretty good. And then, you know, you got him. Bob Ross. So he's got his picture inside. He's got his picture on the back. He's got the, uh, the track titles. It's pretty good. You can see it. It's a light on dark, which I like. So it sticks out a little. You got the CD. It's another picture. Usually they stick the same picture. He's actually got a different picture in everything. So that's pretty interesting, I suppose. You know, all sides of Travis Tritt. So, uh, yeah, it's not bad. You got, you know, the track listings got everybody that's played on each song. And then, of course, you got all the words in here and your liner notes and all that. So it's pretty good. Um, this one's produced by Dave Cobb, you know, one of our favorites, or well, one of my favorites anyway. Uh, seems like to me, Dave Cobb always seems to put out something good, man. Yep. You know? So I liked it. I thought it was a pretty good uh, CD. Uh, I don't know what you think about it, but I, I was pretty, I was pretty happy with it. I liked it. It was a throwback. To me, it was a throwback. It reminded me a lot of the stuff that I was doing back in the eighties and into the nineties. You know, um, I loved it. I mean, felt comfortable. And it's like uh, this one review I read. The guy said, "Yep, it's all to put the boomers right in the seat." Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we did the Alan Jackson a couple, three weeks ago, whenever it was, and he kind of brought back the old school country, right? And then now we got this Travis Tritt, which to me, he's got some old country in there. He's got the Southern rock. He's even got the, what they considered new country back in the nineties going on, you know, and I feel like he's bringing all, he's bridging all that together in this CD and you're getting a little bit of every kind of country you could ever want on this one. You got know? the album thing happening too, you know. Um, matter of fact, song was it? it was uh, Ghost Town Nation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I put down there, it's a good blues feel slash Hank Jr. Yeah, I, I have that being as like, a, it remind me a lot of the 90s, 2000s country, more of the new country stuff. Of course it had all the cliches of every country song you could ever yeah. you know fish in pickup trucks all that stuff yeah so, but yeah i mean you know you're gonna get that so we'll go run through the tracks real quick uh number one we got stand your ground which was actually it's pretty funny because he wrote that off of a quote that waylon jennings gave to him one day i don't know if you know the story behind that i, heard, I read something i don't know the whole story yeah well, what happened was he, he started out in the 80s and he did some country stuff and it's, that's kind of what got him famous. But then he put out an album that had more of a rocking country, uh, like a Southern rock, had a lot of rock and guitar stuff in it. And people were really criticizing him pretty bad. And he was doing a show and Waylon Jennings was on the, on the bill somewhere. And he, they all walked out and Waylon Jennings called him back in and he says, hey man, I've been hearing a lot of the stuff they're talking about you. He said, I, I just want you to know, don't let it get to you. Cause they said the same stuff about me and Willie and everybody else that, that does music. He said, just do your thing. He said, because the people that are criticizing you aren't the ones buying your records. People buying your records are the blue collar guys going out, working hard, buying your CDs. And, and then he asked him, he says, are you selling records? And Travis Tritt said, yeah. He said, are you, uh, getting people to come to your shows he said yeah i'm selling out he said well then don't worry about what they say because those are the people you're playing for he said just stand your ground and play what you want to play and that's basically what this song's about you know standing his ground playing what he wants to play whether you like it or not that's him you know so. yeah. yeah well i mean 
it's just like what we were talking about earlier about our 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 little YouTube thing here mm -hmm. and comments that are made. Uh, you just read the comment and walk away. Yeah, shrug them off. If it's something that tickles your fancy, okay, go ahead and reply. You know? Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, I ain't gonna lose any sleep over it. No, because people are gonna complain about everything. It doesn't matter who you are, somebody's gonna complain. But with this song here, it did remind me a lot of Southern rock. I like the dual guitar work going on because you had harmonies and one, you know, two different guitars in each ear. And I thought that was pretty cool. I, I really liked the first song. So, yeah. And then we get the set in stone, which is kind of a throwback to some old old style country to me. Um, kind of, you know, basically talking about how, you know, he worked hard to get where he is and, you know, whatever happens, you know, he, he's pretty much his legacy is set in stone by what he's already done. And basically what that to me means is, you know, a hardworking man, you do what you got to do. And then once you go, you're going to pass that legacy down to the next hardworking man and the next hardworking man. So, you, you know, you're pretty much setting it in stone. You well, know what I, I mean? I, I wrote it down as a good ballad. Mm -hmm. and Lyrics. The lyrics are very easy to follow, and yeah. you know, uh, whether it be about his legacy or anybody's story, I mean, but right. that's the whole thing. It tells a story, and that that you can relate to very easy. And I liked it. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. First, I was you know thinking about now. I don't know what the lineup is on what you've got as far as song list, but what I came up with was number one was smoking a bar. Yeah, then, no, that's yeah. Smoking a bar is the fourth one. Set in stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I guess this is the LP version or something. I don't know. I, I uh, like I say, I first when I clicked on the album, it started off with Stand Your Ground, but right. Yeah. Then, so the first the first track should be Stand Your Ground. Second one is Set in Stone, and then the third one is Ghost Town Nation. Okay. Yeah. And that's the one you were just talking about, you know, with the, uh, you said sounded like Hank Jr., yeah. right? Yeah, good blues feel to it. And it, it also had that Hank Jr. Uh, uh, angle to it, too. Now this this is one of the songs that he didn't even write. This was something uh, like Aaron Raiders and J.B. Strauss wrote this. So right. possible they might have worked with some of Hank stuff, too. I mean, but I like the song. It's got a really, it's got a really cool video to it as well and uh to me it was definitely what you would call the 90s new country is what i got out of it you know had all the cliches you know but it was a good song and then the fourth song we come up with is smoke in the bar smoke in a bar yeah which just by the way i know this has nothing to do with the song but man i was so happy when they stopped smoking in bars because i got tired of bringing my equipment home and it's smelling like smoke for days in the house just from amps you know you won't ever get rid of that smoke no well that's why i got new amps <laughs> I've, I've, gone, I've gone around some classic amps and i'll tell you right now they smell just as bad today as they did back in the day. <laughs> yeah and it takes you back to the days when they were smoking in bars right that's I why mean, back in the day i hardly cleaned my equipment it didn't do any good because one night in the bar especially at the green wheel yeah <laughs> I mean, right. you're right. What they had, they had a smoke eater in there. It's right above our head on the stage. It's like, well, if you look at this base right here behind me, it's really white, but all that's nicotine that's making it yellow. That's from all the years of playing in bars. It does that to your guitars, you know. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, smoking a bar, I thought it was pretty cool. Kind of had an idea of like, you know, the world, the world, you know, it's moving so fast. He wants to slow it down, you know. Right you know things going a little too far you know i wish i could go back to simpler times like the days when you could smoke in a bar basically is what he's saying yeah it's, he's just he's just trying to date it and right I, I wish he'd had a, had another reference besides smoke in the bar i mean yeah i, I know i kind of i kind of thought the same thing you, you know, know but, but you know but, you know, it's, it goes to back to, you know, what musicians dealt with back then, you know, I mean, that's what we dealt with. So I changed you know. my stage at times. So, yeah. Know, I yeah. Got a lot of <laughs> right. So then we get to number five and that is leave this world. And to me, this is a song that sounds like something and I had a hard time figuring it out, but I, I 
felt like it kind of had a Kenny Rogers feel about it, but it had that old style. I don't well, know. It had that old style sound that, you know, it was, it's, it's very familiar song. And I, had a Marty it's Robbins, sad. had a Marty Robbins flair to it, you know, yeah. with a little bit of that Spanish uh, gut string guitar happening, yeah. you yeah. know, and <clears throat> I don't know. I just thought it was a great ballad. I really it was. I, I yeah. thought it, I thought it really, really touched on an era in country music, which takes you back to the 60s. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, uh, that's, that's an era that should not be forgotten. <laughs> yeah. I'm and sorry. the thing, too, I mean, that sound that he got out of that, and that's a typical Dave Cobb, man, to me, because Dave Cobb has a way of making stuff sound authentically older than what it really is, you know? And I actually read some stuff where people were giving Dave Cobb crap about they, that everything he does sounds like it's in an echo chamber or something. Oh, which, I saw that. Yeah. Which totally is bogus to me. You know, I, I like what Dave Cobb does. I think Dave takes and leaves little mistakes in there because it's authentic. I, well, I like what he's done with just about everybody that I've listened to. The you reason know? why people are, are saying those things, and I don't know, I need to dig into Dave Cobb, but I got a feeling you're going to find out he's mixing an analog and a digital world. I'm sure he is. It's a hybrid, it's a hybrid mix. Yeah. And these people that are, that are bitching about it, they can't do it. No. They don't have these, experience to do it. Well, and, the same people that are complaining about it are the same people that are listening to all this Pro Tools crap that they right. get, you know? Right. So, Yeah. So anyway, I, I, I just think Dave Cobb did an excellent job of making that one sound like it was from the 60s. Right. You know, so and then we get to number uh, number six, and that's they don't make them like that no more. And to me, I mean, that's the new country for sure. You got that new country Southern rock flavor going. You know, basically he's comparing they don't make them like that anymore to the same thing. That's the same thing we would sit around and say all the time. It's like, man, they don't make a car like that anymore. Or, man, you need to get you a girl like that because they don't make them like that anymore. Right, same right. And, and then it ends up talking about music. And this is what we talk about every week. They don't make music like they made before. You know, they just don't make it like that no more. So, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I, I kind of touched me a little bit because of the, it went from the cars, girls, music. It's something that we sit around and talk about every day. Yeah. 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 Well, the biggest thing that I love about this album <clears throat> is I could see <clears throat> walking into a blues bar, for example, and pulling any of these songs up. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, staying right straight to the arrangement and open it up, and then just let it go. Instrumental time, just let it go. And I'm going to tell you what, you'll have a blast with it. Well, There's not too many songs today in popular music that you could do that with. And, and the thing, too, about Travis Tritt, that, I mean, he comes from a background. I mean, he's talking, you know, you're talking about Ray Charles, Little Richard, blues greats, rock greats, southern rock greats. I mean, this is what he's formed his sound on. And you yep. hear all those elements in all these songs. So, you know, you're right. You can play these songs pretty much in any bar, yeah. you know? Good. So good. So we get to number seven, and this is another, it turns, you know, it's got that other old, older country sound, another slow one. It's called Better Off Dead, which is basically, you know, it's a guy wallowing around in his misery, you all know, right. and then he decides, you know, he'd be better off dead, but then he goes and he looks at his daughter and, you know, he's like, well, maybe, you know, my life ain't as bad as I thought it was. And I have something to live for, you know, the typical story, you all know right. what I'm saying? So, and then we get to number eight and that's Southern man. And it's another one of, you know, uh, upbeat newer country type sounding songs, Southern rock type thing, you know, yeah. talks about pretty much his history and his way up. You that's know. Those Leonard Skinner, 38 Special, whatever, you know, rockers. Yep. And I'm glad, you know, I love hearing those guitars. I love hearing yep. the guitar work. And it, it, I mean, it's, it's one hell of an inspiration. And the thing, too, about this, where like with the Alan Jackson, you got the old school country, 
but you only had like maybe, of course, that album was 21 songs long, and you only had like three of them that were upbeat. So you had like 18 slow songs. Alan Jackson was pretty much a ballad singer. Right. But then you get this album, and every song's different. You know, I mean, there they he does have a, he has like three or four that are slow, three or four that are upbeat, but they're so spread out in here that you don't get bored. You know, it doesn't get into a lull like some of the albums. You know, you you listen to it, the beginning's great, then you get to the middle and it's like uh, okay, and then the end picks up again. Here right. he's throwing it around so much, you know, yeah. and. Um, well, real quick, we'll go through the last three. Open line, another kind of slowish one. And then Ain't Who I Was, kind of like a coming of age thing, you know. And then the last song, Way Down in Georgia, has that really cool little vocal thing, Way Down in Georgia. What's one thing that? I will say about this song, well, I got a few things, but the word Georgia is like the perfect word because you can stretch that word out to match any measure you want, right? Or you can make it short. So if you need a real quick word, you can say, I'm going down to Georgia. But if you need a longer one, you say, I'm going down to Georgia or Georgia, you know, I mean, that word can be stretched to match any line of any song. Just listen to Ray Charles. Yeah, and he (laughs) sings it six different ways, right? In that song. Here's the thing about that song, though. To me, I love the song. I love the feel of the song and everything. Yeah. A little confusing though, because it's got that swamp Delta blues feel. It to does. It. I know. Not when, from Georgia. I'm not talking about Louisiana. <laughs> not talking about the Delta and Mississippi. We're talking about Georgia here. So right. I, I, I'm thinking it was a little mixed iteration there, you know what I mean? It was. And, and, you know, I have written down that it has a tropical feel about it. It's something like you sit at a tiki bar almost and right. you can hear that. Right. But then they're talking about Georgia, which doesn't, you know, like you're saying, it, there's no, no, no Louisiana, no tiki bar thing that I associate with Georgia. I don't see myself sitting on bourbon street, drinking a shot of whiskey and chasing it with a beer, listening to a song talking about Georgia. Right. But the one thing I give him in this song is he talks a lot. He pays homage to a lot of Georgia musicians. Yes, he does. Yeah. So it talks about what, you know, the people that come up from the Georgia clay. Which, which, you know, you could, oh gosh, you could, you could take it down to, to Muscle Shoals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to, if you want to kind of twist it in that direction. Okay. I mean, I can accept that, you know, but to me right off the bat, I was like, Oh, this is a Delta blues. You know I mean? This is yeah. got that yeah. Delta blues happening. Even, even had the, you could even, you could hear the choir in the background singing way down in Georgia. You know what I mean? I mean, right. you could have really, if you wanted to do the muscle shoals effect to this, you could have really pumped this one up. But I mean, I just kind of like the way he was kind of referencing, you know, Ray Charles and Gladys Knight and even Scarlett O'Hara, you know, I mean, he just kind of, he's just kind of giving you a little Georgia history, yeah, even yeah. though it's a Calypso beat. <laughs> kind, of, kind of Calypso. Yep. 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 <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, you know, no. whatever tropical tree you want to be under. You got to, you got to stand up and pay attention to, What's the concept of the whole idea of the album? 14 years since he had released an album. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the thing. These older stars from yesteryear are coming back, putting their stamp out there again. Yeah. Because somebody needs to center the music, especially the music from out of Nashville. Well, well, what he said, too, was that, you know, country music, and he wasn't putting the new music down. He was just saying that it doesn't have the stories that it used to have. And he was focusing on writing stories on this one. And I, and I think he captured that pretty well. Another thing I want to say, and I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with me on this. You know, last week we had an issue. Who did we do last week? That was a uh, mammoth Wolfgang Van Halen, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what was the one thing that bothered you about the drums on that? 
they all sounded the same okay now on this album what can you say what i can say is is i heard a change in the sound on practically every song every song i mean there was different snare sounds was it triggers it was different drums i feel like there's probably at least five shuffles on this album yeah you know and and every drum every song sounded different and i and i have that written here because i wanted to make a point of when you do a record this is what you want to do to the drums yeah you want them to sound the way the song is you when don't you know, want the sound of every song every song has the same drum sound this one the drums match the song and i wish i wish live performing drummers which is something that i've been thinking about doing now i'm not talking about i'm not talking about bar drummers i'm talking about drummers on main stages you know opening shows or the main act carrying more than one snare and having it set up yeah there's no yeah. excuse for not doing it you, and if you, look, it, you look at people like vinnie right yeah look at vinnie Collietti. look at look at steve smith steve they smith, got more than one have three snare drums sitting up there on stage with a hand electronic rolling yeah yeah and you know, uh i'm sorry these are people that are just like a guitar player and can sit there and flip a toggle switch and get a different sound out of their guitar mm -hmm. just like that that's what they're looking at doing with the drums yep. and there's no excuse there's no excuse at all and i'm sorry if people did not like our comments about what was going on on Mammoth. I don't know. Let me it's, tell you something. It's my take, and you can take it to the bank. That drum sound was the same on every song. The only thing they did is add a little reverb on one of them. Yeah, I know. And really, to be honest with you, there was more likes than dislikes. So whatever, you know. Right. But yeah. anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to point that out that this is what you're supposed to do you're supposed to make things sound like the song needs not everything sound the same on every song you need to make the stuff sound like what the song calls for like you're yeah. saying you don't play a les paul on every song no. you know sometimes you need that strat sound sometimes you need that telecaster you, you know there are guitars that can get away with it but Generally, when these guys are playing these songs, they play the instrument that matches the song sound. Exactly. Not, yep. not the same crap on everyone. And that's a problem you have when you have one guy doing everything. Well, yeah, and 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 it also sounds so sterile. Mm -hmm. No feeling. Hey, I sat in my bedroom and I did these drum tracks. And I laid the bass lines down. So now I'm gonna go to the studio enhance the sound with a guitar and possibly a keyboard sound and yep. then let the producer and engineers do what they want to do yep. and there you go you and, and 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 this is where you get the magic of a dave cobb yep exactly yeah. that's caring about your music right you want to put the effort into making things sound a little different that's mm -hmm. why i've spent so much time with my symbols you know i've been collecting and mixing and whatever trying to get the right symbol thing and i think i've got the right thing right now <clears throat> you know i've got a crash ride i have a ride i have two crashes i have my china i have my splash i have my hi-hats you know and i think that i can cover any basic sound that i need to cover with that setup i want to go heavy metal well i've got i can do it mm -hmm. i want to go swing country swing well yeah. i can use my crash ride for my ride and use my light light crashes you know and forget about my big 21 inch ride you know? but see but you're you're also doing this in more of a live situation where you don't have the benefit of all right we're going to record this song i'm going to use this stuff right. then next next time i'm going to come in we're going to do this song we're going to use this stuff you're actually trying to incorporate everything into your live sound so you can cover all your bases exactly so and and doing that, in fact, you're actually playing to the sound of the song. So, yes, you know, and, and there's a lot to be said for that. That's what you got to do. You want to spell yourself as a performer and a musician. Then you've got to be able to cover the bases. You can't walk in with a heavy metal kit and play a swing gig. 
Mm-hmm. You know, as people used to say to me all the time, because I used to carry five basses at some points, which if you look around, you'll see I've got quite a few guitars. I don't have them because I like them. I mean, I do like them, don't get me wrong, but they're for a purpose. You know, there's at, at some time, I'm, I need these other bases. I can't do it all with one. I do have one that I can do a lot with, but you know, I got to have the five string. I've got to have the fretless. I've got to have one tuned down a half step. You know, I mean, I can't just do that on stage. No. You know, I have to put that bass down and grab another one and we're ready to go. Especially with the bass guitar because no, you just, you can't. <laughs> You can't just tune a bass guitar down a half step. Right. And, you know, I've got, I've got different setups. I've got the precision. I've got the jazz. I've got the double humbucker. It all depends on what you're doing. And what drives me crazy about some modern day recordings is they don't take that time to change those sounds, you know? And, and again, that's what I go back to say Dave Cobb's magic because he can, he can get that essence out of these people when he records this stuff like no one can, you know? Well, there are, there are nuances too. And I'll get people like Dave Cobb and I'll tell you Chip Young, for example, when, I, when we were indirectly working with him, I say indirectly, I mean, he, he came out and heard us several times, mm-hmm. you know, handling Donna. <clears throat> and... Um, I figured out so many things on how to do different things as far as all right, playing drums and doing sound. Mm-hmm. And there are things that you can do in a live situation to where, for example, and this might be getting above people's heads a little bit, but run the vocal dry through a channel. You come out of that channel effects wise, put it into a delay, feed that back into another channel and add the reverb. So what you get is a pop. Well, what happens there, what you're explaining is exactly what Eddie Van Halen used to do. Yes, an envelope filter is basically what it is. See, if you ever listen to old records and one side you don't hear anything out of, but reverb. Right. It's it's exactly what they're doing is they're looping it around. You're getting the guitar over here and your reverb over here and you're mixing it together and you're getting this sound. Yes. You know. And that's, that's, that's all about good production. That's all about good mixing, you know, and a lot of music lacks that these days. So there's a handful that can still do it. So anyway, let me get back to this real quick, because I know we are going on a tangent. There's one more thing I wanted to say about Travis Tritt that I didn't realize until I saw him talk about it. Did you know that Travis Tritt is responsible for getting the Eagles back together? I heard something about that, something along those lines, yeah. Well, here's the story. They were doing a tribute album, a country tribute album to the Eagles. Eagles, yeah. And they had a bunch of people on there, different people. It wasn't the Eagles. It was just someone else, and they were all doing it. Well, anyway, they called Travis Tritt, and they asked him to come in, and uh, he said, yeah, I'll do a song. So he goes in there, and they said, uh, well, what song do you want to do? So he names one. They're like, nah, we already got him doing that one. He said, well, how about this one? He's like, eh, man, we already got that one. And he said, well, this, you know, this, I think he said his lawyer, his lawyer told him, hey, why don't you do Take It Easy? That was their first hit. He's right. like, all right, let's do Take It Easy. So they did the song and then they called him up and they said, uh, we're going to use your song for the first single and we want to do a video. What do you want to do in the video? And he's like, Heck, I don't know. He said, why don't we just get all the Eagles back together and just do a video with them? And they're like, well, let's see what happens. So he calls Glenn Fry up and he's like, Hey, we're going to do this song, you know, as the first single. And we're wondering if, if you'd be interested in maybe coming in on the video, we're going to try to get all the Eagles in. And he's like, okay, well, if Don will do it, I'll do it. So then they said, okay. So they called Don. They didn't tell Don that they asked Glenn. They told Don that they called him first because they didn't want it to be an issue. Right. You know how they are. That's the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Don says, all right, well, I'll do it if Glenn does it. And he's like, all right, well, we'll contact Glenn, right? So now they got him. You know, right. they get the rest of them and they do the video and they're all just sitting around and they're playing pool in the video and walking around and, you know, just looking cool. 
But then at the end of the shoot, they had a bunch of instruments set up, live instruments. And I mean, you had Joe Walsh, Don Felder, Timothy B. Smith, Glenn Fry, and Don Henley. And he said they got up there and then Travis Tritt started playing uh, Rocky Mountain Way. You know, Joe's going to jump in. So then they all start playing Rocky Mountain Way. And then they got back together playing that song. And then they decided, you know what? This felt pretty good. Let's go ahead and get back out there and do it. And then that's when when the Hell Freezes Over tour came. Uh -huh. they, that's how it all happened was Travis Tritt, which I didn't know that. So, huh. I didn't know that. I didn't know that whole story. I had heard that he had a hand. And I remember a video being done with him doing take it easy i remember and it was that. good yeah, yeah. i heard it. Oh, yeah i mean travis tritt's a good singer yeah, yeah. good singer and i'm and, pretty sure he had to, uh uh i'm not sure who the musicians are on there but uh, it wasn't the eagles no, i'll guarantee you it was the a team out of nashville probably so probably so it was great though so anyway i thought that was a really cool piece of trivia that i didn't know you know so Hopefully everybody stuck around to watch the rest of this review and they'll learn that. <laughs> so anyway, all right, we'll wrap this up real quick. Uh, honestly, you know, I'm not a country guy, but I like this record. I mean, I liked it a lot, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I don't like it as much as I like the Chris Stapleton, but right. I definitely like it more than I like Alan Jackson. So I'm going to give this one an eight, five, believe it or not, I'm going that high, you know, Eight, eight, five for me, because I like the storytelling, like you were saying earlier. I mean, each song has its own story. You kind of feel everything that's happening. Everything was written with a purpose. Sound, the production, Dave Cobb, I love him. So it, eight, eight, five for me. It hits the boomer sweet spot, you know. I hate to say it, but, yep, I'm a boomer. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but it really hits that sweet spot. It hits that spot of, I remember those days of watching people out there doing the two-step and line dancing to this kind of music. Mm -hmm. And it needs to come back, you know. Uh, the, the tractor rap needs to go away. I think I think it will be. And, you know, we're seeing this change of, of uh, not necessarily the change of guard, but the old guard coming back yeah. and saying, listen, this is what country music is. What you guys are doing, we don't know what that is. This is what it's supposed to sound like. So, And it's, you know, there are going to be people that are going to argue this point. Really, mm -hmm. I don't care. I mean, it's just my opinion. Yep. Take it to the bank. Do whatever you want with it. Um, <clears throat> I've been in music for a long time. And I'm very disappointed in what the new country is. I'm just glad to see this coming around. I'm just sorry that it has to revert back to the old school the way it is mm -hmm. because it should be growing from the old school, growing the sound and not turning their backs on it and walking away from it. Yeah. And I think there may be some more out there. Uh, by the way, what did you give this record real quick? I'm going to, I'm going to give it an eight. An eight. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You mean I scored it higher than you? Yeah. Well, you know, I thought about doing eight and a half or a nine, but it's like, you know, you got to be real special to get that nine. Yeah, nine's, nine's a reach. Eight, five is a lot for me, but I liked it. So, you know, it's more of if I'm going to listen to country, this is more of what I want to hear. Um, I'm hoping that maybe somebody can suggest us some new guys that sound like this. Well, you know, I mean, like I say, uh, there's, there's some avenues to go down to find – different alternatives to what we're hearing today on popular radio yeah. world radio is one to go to you know i mean it's an online streaming yeah i, I like i like that station uh or finding obscure new people that are using roots to well, put their out there, you know right but i mean as far as like country goes i mean i know you got people out there like luke combs and stuff like that but i mean i i'm not a country guy so i'm not familiar with the modern artist other than what i hear and i don't like anything i've heard lately you know as far as country goes i mean it's not that i listen to country because i don't like it i just can't stand 
a lot of the stuff I've heard modern day, you know, like your, uh, your, you know, your, your voice guy that does this, whatever his name is, was Blake Shelton or some crap, you know, it's people like that. I, I just can't, I can't listen to. Well, I can't listen to the finger pops and all this stuff. Uh, I hate to say it, but the girls in, in modern country are killing the guys. Mm. The hell the men are trying to do but the girls yeah. got it going on a little bit and i'll listen to their stuff a lot quicker and i will sit and listen to any of the men singing country music today yeah. because it's just a bunch of looping a bunch of electronic finger pops mm -hmm. you know and it's like and rap. rapping and yeah. rapping you, what you can't sing yeah well, I, tell, I want everybody out there that listens to us to go ahead and tell us a few names. Comment on here a few names of CDs that are modern country that you want us to listen to that thinks that you think compares to what this older stuff was and what Alan Jackson and Travis Tritt are doing right now. Well, so, yeah. You know, because I'd, like I'd like to hear something that's out by popular people that don't sound like tractor rap. Exactly. You know, um, I'm willing to give anybody a chance, but, mm -hmm. but what I've been hearing for the past five years is at not least, what I want to listen to, you know. At least five years. I don't watch the CMA awards anymore. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, I don't. I pretty much abandon all all music awards shows. I don't see anything out there worth watching. They're yeah. not. I mean, when you're, <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started on that. I'm. We'll start yeah. talking about my thoughts on what the weekend is. <laughs> yeah and and he's actually the better of the evils <laughs> but anyway all right we'll, we'll we'll wrap this up all right uh travis tritt set in stone i dig it mike likes it if you're traditional and newer country guy double thumbs up it's a good one man it's it's a good one i gave it eight five mike gave it eight zero maybe next week we'll do a bluegrass one until then though i want everybody <laughs> To be safe out there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Man, just listen to the music and peace out.